Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. Okay. From the pause. <laughs> the listener knows something is afoot. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So it's a photo of a glass casserole on a kind of a picnic table. In the background, you could just see maybe it's a maybe it's painted green floor. I'm just describing the the, the background not the point of the photo. The point of the photo is that in this glass casserole, somebody baked the chocolate cake and then they put some white frosting. And then uh, they put seven strawberries, eight strawberries in the white frosting slash whipped cream. And there's sprigs of rosemary, I think. Yes, rosemary. Like rosemary. And there's a green dinosaur that's been sprinkled with uh, icing sugar that's walking away wait there's a green dinosaur that's kind of heading off camera looking off camera next to the green dinosaur could be it's a bear or something some other small thing and just below or before that is it looks like a snail or something <laughs> it's hard to know what that is crawling uh and it's called What's not to love dioramas, Godzilla, and cake? Yeah. Okay, let, let us into your head. <laughs> What's going on in there? You're like, why this photo? I don't even know which, which topic to pick first, because there's three reasons why I picked it, and they're all kind of in there. I love dioramas, like especially the little mm -hmm. miniature one, but even the life-size ones you see at the museum, I just, I love dioramas, oh, yeah. you know? yeah. Yeah. And one year I made a New Year's resolution to make a diorama. And guess what I did not do? <laughs> so I, For the whole year? I didn't do it at all. Well, I make like 50 New Year's resolutions and get like three of them done. You're a nut bar. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, yeah. That's so great. Christmas, my mom's like, can you make a cake? And my sister's like... She was like, I'll do it. And I was like, no, I'll do it because I'm going to use this as my diorama cake. Nice, nice. <laughs> and I put Godzilla in there. I had a little Godzilla. Yeah. And next to him is a little baby Godzilla. And the one that she yeah. said looked like a slug is the larva stage of Mothra. Okay. So as a kid, larva stage of a, of a, a Mothra. What? I don't, What's a Mothra? Mothra is a big giant moth that in some of the movies he fights or she fights. Godzilla okay. and other times they're, ah. they're they're working together and I think in the later movies ah. they start to work together and Mothra has the little yep. singing twins sure you know so okay I'm saying yes and nodding <laughs> but I'm I'm in my head I'm like what <laughs> so you made this cake yes um um <laughs> Okay, look, I have this feeling that, like, I have this attitude and thing that everything's symbolic. Everything is a window into the person's mind, into their things. So, okay, dioramas. Yes. Right? So, in the previous photo, there was a, there were the life-size dioramas or whatever. Yeah, there. there's some life-size dioramas of, like, you know, sure. planes and, you know, yeah. Africa and whatnot. But the, the, you're probably like, why Godzilla? Why did I pick Godzilla no. and not, like, something else for my diorama? Well, as a kid, I was a huge Godzilla fan. I loved all those movies. I watched, mm -hmm. you know, the seventies ones that they were they're considered kind of a little cheesy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but I loved mm -hmm. watching them. I'm like, I like watching them fight the other monsters, and you know, so I wanted Own to it. do a diorama using Godzilla. <laughs> okay, well, look, as a creative soul, uh, the fact that you were able to make that costume gives me a sense that you understand i mean for people that they have to check it out the photo either on youtube or whatever and subscribe to the podcast no but like um i get the sense that you're not even if you're like this weekend artist or whatever you know what you're doing that aesthetic of oh i really like godzilla and it's a, you know, it's a certain, there's a history and there's a, you know, an evolution. And if you followed it for so long, and I like how you said like, oh, when I was, when I was a kid, I was a big fan. It's like, 
no, you're a big fan. You're I'm still, still a big, big fan. fan. <laughs> yes, I saw the latest movies as they came out, and I like was criti- I even wrote an essay critiquing it. I'm like, they should have did this, and they should have done that, and this would have made it better because I really wanted the movie to be just like <laughs> top notch, awesome. It was still good. Don't sure. get me wrong, but it needed more monster fighting in the light. <laughs> Got it. Got it. <laughs> they had them fighting at nighttime. <laughs> well, okay, let's look at this diorama for a second because okay, so. The one thing that is not happening is conflict. Yeah. And I, I'm sure somebody's listening to this is going like, what the hell is going on? What are they talking about? And I'm like, but, but that tells me something. What does it say that, that they're, they're, they're basically, they're like three amigos on a, on a trip through the, the strawberries. Well, it's, it's really interesting you said there's no conflict because I actually had a little story in my head when I made the, the cake and the diorama. It's like, they are lost and they're in the snow, okay. and they're lizards, so I'm not sure, or two of them are lizards, so I'm not sure how well the snow would, how it would affect them. So mm-hmm. they were trying to get home. <laughs> they're trying to find their way home. Hmm. I don't know why that popped into my head when I made it, but. So in terms of your, okay, your in terms of your work, it's very analytical. You've got like a slightly, I mean, you're doing finance, Yeah. I don't do finance, but I'm kind of writing about... Well, actually, I do assess the market for the day, and then I write about it. So that says something about what your brain is is like. How do you understand biology, natural history? I mean, you're you're in the museum. I'm thinking natural history because that's where the dinosaurs were. Do you understand the science? Like, how are you informed by, by that whole part of the world? Well, interestingly enough, like when I was in high school and college, I did extremely well in the sciences. I did extremely well in mathematics and abstract mathematics. And there was a big Mm -hmm. push from everyone around me to go that direction. You know, Mm -hmm. become an engineer, become a mathematician, do something with it. And I'm just like, it's so boring. (laughs) Like, I really just didn't like it. Now, maybe I could have figured out a way to have made it more interesting. And I think a lot of stuff like engineering and design, it is, there is a very creative aspect to it. But they have rules mm-hmm. that they are working within the rules to make something new. And I probably mm-hmm. could have got into that. But instead, I went to college and majored in film production. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and did nothing with it. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I disagree. I would disagree because film, there's the there's the advice that the cl- the cliched advice that parents should give their children is, you know, figure out what you want to do, study hard, become that thing, you know, become a doctor or whatever, and s- stay determined and focused, and definitely don't job hop and all that crap. But when you tell me that you studied film, that was training in how to tell a story in movement. Right. You know, it's like, it's action. Like, it's not, if, if there's no action in moving, in, in a movie, it's boring. You need to have some kind of movement or some kind of displacement of something to move a character, to move a story. And so, like, for example, in, in, in your cake, like, now that I'm looking at it, you thought of making the path for the moth larva yes larva? Like, you can see <laughs> the moth, you, but you can see that it's actually furrowed a path in, a path in the icing and also the same thing for the tail of, of godzilla like it shows that wait a second they're, they've been on this journey like they've been moving like there's all like it's just a cake it's just plastic toys in in icing but <laughs> your your arrangement tells me that you've had some training in in narrative yeah, I guess that's true. You know, I made I've made short films before, and I've written scripts. You know, I I took a screenwriting class at UT, and then recently I took a screenwriting class with a professional screenwriter. He's now in Houston. He teaches at U of H, but he's been out mm-hmm. in LA and he's had things made. He's had his movies mm-hmm. actually progress into movies. So he, I feel like he's legit. You know, he can yeah good yeah. guidance. But yeah, it's all about storytelling and structure which i know a lot of people think structure oh that that's a bad thing and i'm like no it's not structure is freeing as odd as that sounds it's freeing yeah you've got your set things now you can do whatever within it 
And then once you learn that, you can be like, well, I'm going to break the structure. But learn the structure right. first, you know. So, yeah. See, you aren't that much of a weirdo. You're not that much of a weirdo <laughs> in that job. Because even your crazy cake makes a symbolic sense. Yes. And plus, I love cake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how many How many uh, siblings do you have? I have an older sister, and that's it. That's it? Yep. You too? Okay. Uh, and how many mothers do you have? One mother. Well, okay, I have stepmom. I do have stepmom. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Um, and I'm, I'm just asking dumb questions. <laughs> that's my rule, to ask the dumbest questions. That's, that's great. So we, we've discovered that you're a weirdo. You make clothes. You play music. You perform in front of thousands, which takes a certain kind of person. Uh, you've studied film. Uh, you've made a few clips. And the way you, you earn your bread is by uh, discussing um, finance, writing about finance. Um, look, this is just how we, this is what we do. <laughs> yes. So is there, is there more that you'd like to share about your cake? I think that's pretty much it. You know, it shows my love for the monster genre mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. dioramas and obviously cake. Because I'm like, who, who doesn't like cake? <laughs> You know. Yeah, most people go like cake. Just from my observation and my learning and, and knowing you, uh, I, I I appreciate your quirkiness and your there's a fearlessness in sort of going on stage and being and making music and being in costume and making music. But to a certain extent, you you inhabit a kind of character. You're like, oh, tonight I'm being weird. I'm going uh, as whatever. Okay, but then to make the decision, a conscious decision of okay, I'm going on this podcast. And one of the images I'm going to present, which is a kind of a pillar, a symbolic pillar, is this, the, this uh, appreciation for dioramas. Like a diorama is, in a way, it's like a frozen moment. The way, the way I photograph is a frozen moment. So a diorama is like this kind of like, well, I'm going to create a narrative out of, well, not necessarily cake, but whatever. You know, like I'm going to, like in a museum, here's this frozen moment that's meant to kind of represent a time of the past. I don't know. I'm getting the impression that you're a very, uh, I, I love the fact that I have no idea where we're going next. Because... <laughs> Should we move on to the next photo? Sure, let's go. So is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired because that really is my mission then please give it a like subscribe and share shooting it raw yes shooting